And welcome back to GWG. My name's Damien Darkside, and we are playing Minecraft. Now, last episode was pretty easy going episode. It was pretty nice, pretty normal, pretty okay. But this episode, I thought I'd get a little bit more deeper. I thought I'd be able to get a little bit more serious, but on a serious note. And I'm currently taking a hospitality management course. So for those who don't know, uh, hospitality management is pretty much running a hotel or like specific parts of a hotel. It's pretty much hotel industry. Now, recently, unless you've been completely blind to the news, you have been, uh, do I, first let's go with what we're doing in the episode before I go on to that tangent. We are upgrading this pulverizer and we are going to automatic, uh, have it so that it has a, uh, filter on it that gives it 11% more chance to have a secondary output, which is good because I'll get secondary ores and more dusts and all that stuff, which is really nice. Now, for the main bulk, for the main part of the episode, if you haven't been blind, you've been looking at the news and you've been realizing that shit is going down in Syria. And there's been a lot of immigrant, not immigrants, refugees, different part, a lot of refugees trying to get into other countries to flee the violence that's within Syria. Now, specifically, I'm not going to talk about the refugees in particular. If I cannot even fathom what they're going through and how tough it must be in order to leave your own country to try to get to another in order to keep your family going. Like that kind of shit is just super heavy and I cannot fathom it. So I'm not. Now, what the main part that I want to discuss is the unfeasibility of good intention. Now, in the newspaper, I don't know if it was an American or a Canadian hotel, but what they decided that they would do is they would open up their doors and allow people in. Come on in. Like if you if you're a ref Syria for refugee, we will harbor you. Like we will we will try to attend to your, you know, needs and make it so that you actually have a place to stay while you're trying to get into the country legally and processed and all that good stuff. And I don't know how many refugees they brought in. Do you want I might <laughs> technically I'm not even sure if it's an American one. But we discussed this in class. I'm taking a hospital management course, so this was an important topic we had to discuss. So the main thing that we talked about was the feasibility of being able to do that. Now, believe it or not, running a hotel is extremely, extremely expensive. And you have to talk about uh, all the food, got, like, you know, food for customer service. So you're able to uh, feed everybody in the hotel, uh, like all your guests. You would have to be able to manage everybody in the hotel. So like uh, all the guests that are currently there, you have to have housekeeping, go through their rooms to make sure that each and every single day they're clean. That's all the linens, all of the surface area on the tables, all of the... Uh, Anything the guests may touch, so cleaning off the walls and all that. Give me a sec, there's a cat. And, like, there's so much to do. Like, just for housekeeping alone, just, just think of everything a housekeeper much, must do in order to make sure that your hotel, like, your, your a room is clean. And then multiply that by the amount of rooms that need to be done. And hotel staff are timed. Like if you got a if you're a which call it if you are a uh, oh, wow I just said if you're a housekeeper good an extra slot for argumentation if you're a housekeeper you only have so much time to clean a room you do not have all day and you'd be surprised how many rooms housekeepers don't get to like uh, on average it would take 30 minutes to clean a room that's two rooms in an hour working an eight hour shift. Two times eight is 16, minus uh, time for setup and get ready on your shift. So instead of 16 rooms, you get 15 done. And that's good timing. That's industry standard. So you've got 16 rooms to go through. And if you have a whole bunch of uh, refugees that you have to take care of, I forget how to set this up, then like... Think of how much, like, 
how many rooms they take up. And if you have 100 rooms, 15 rooms for a housekeeper, that means that you have 15, 30, 45, 60, I got that right, 50, 60, 75, 90, you've got about 7, 8, 9 housekeepers on staff just for those rooms. So you have to pay for everything in the room. You have to pay for all of the hotel expenses in keeping that room maintained every single day while refugees are there. So you have to pay for all of the expendable stuff. You have to wash the linens. You have to wash the pillowcases. You have to put new towels in. You have to get soaps and shampoos because they can't afford it. And I'm listing off on my hand instead of playing Minecraft. And... Like, think of all that just for housekeepers. So you have all of those expenses, and then you have to pay the housekeepers to get there, because, you know, I'm pretty sure a housekeeper's not going to do that for free. So that hotel is now paying for all the housekeepers uh, to do all that stuff. And not only that, but they also have to be able to make sure that they get all the extra things done. That, that you know, that's their job. So you've got to get all those rooms done. So you have seven housekeepers. You're paying them... You know, whatever amount an hour, if you're Canadian, that's at least 1050 for every province. So every hour for eight hours for... So that's 1050 for every hour minimum. I know you get paid more, but let's say it's minimum wage just to... So that's 1050 every hour on the hour to make sure that that's all done. And guess what? That's a lot of money just for housekeeping. And then you also need the housekeeping attendant staff. So the executive housekeeper who gets paid a lot more. They have to organize all the housekeepers for that day. And then you need front desk to make sure that they know which rooms are done and which needs to be done in each room. And they need the concierge to make sure that everything's getting put in the right spot. And they need all the cooks to cook all the food. And they need managers for all those people who are cooking. And then they had chef. And then the executive chef who gets paid a lot. And then you need to get that front desk managers who are able to coordinate all the rooms and switch through all the shifts to make sure people are working. And then you need the hotel owner to make sure that everything's working over there. And then you need the front end manager, you need the back-end manager, you need the engineering to make sure everything's working, and then you need laundry service, and then you need- ah, So much things! And that's running a hotel when customers are paying to be there! And then you have refugees there who can't pay! Who's gonna pay for that? So I guess the owner either A gets subsidized it from the government, which they won't because the government's not gonna cover for it, so then you have all of that not being paid, so you have lost revenue for every single room. So think of, go right now, go to the internet, look up a hotel. Figure how much it is a room. Multiply that for how long the refugees are staying there. Multiply that every single day of lost income, as well as a drain, because housekeeping and all these extra things, janitors, everything, everything, hundreds of millions of dollars are being spent on one hotel to house 100 rooms for 400, if you do four refugees in a room, 400 refugees, for 400 refugees, you're spending millions of dollars on a hotel every single day with no income. I don't know how they're doing it. There's one hotel doing this. I don't know how they're gonna stay in business. And that's why you run a business is to make money and stay in business. And I'm pacing now because I'm talking and uh, I already got this thing done. So I got today's uh, main thing done. But oh my God. But the thing is, is that one hotel did this. And what was like the top comment on the article? Every hotel should do this. Everyone. Oh my God. It was like, it's completely insane to even think of being able to do that. Like, it's good intentions. Yes. Should every hotel do this? Yes. But like, are you going to work, like, if you're a worker there, are you going to work for a month for free? Are you going to work for free? And then you got overtime and then medical expenses. It's like, it's just... People think that in order to allow refugees in the country, you open the doors and go, Welcome to blank. And that's all that's needed. Should we help these refugees? Yes. But we can't just be like, Alright, let's open up every hotel for them. Or, okay, yes, let's make all the food free for them. Like, where are you going to get this money from? Like, it's such great intentions. But money makes the world go around. So I guess, like I said uh, at the start of the episode, it's the misconception of good intentions. Yes, the intentions are noble, but they're completely unrealistic. Like, yes, it would be wonderful if we could do that, but it's completely unrealistic for any, to expect any organization or, like, 
or that's why I sympathize with all these governments is what are you going to do? You can't have people work for free. You can't bring people in at no expense. It is, it, it's not just a yes, no, like wouldn't this be nice kind of thing. It's just, it's so insane. And I'm only thinking about hotels and I'm only thinking about hotels. And then you got social insurance, and then you've got trying to get these people working, and then you've got all this stuff. And do you want every human life is precious? And like you could, th you could believe that, but to implement that kind of thing is just absolutely insane. You know what? People probably have already turned off the episode already because they disagree with me. But it's reality. Reality is cold and hard, and does not take your good intentions at all. <laughs> oh wow, that was a dark episode. So flipping over to. What I'm doing right now is uh, I'm just putting some decoration in here. And what does every loft have? Bales of hay! There we go. We got a little bit more. I'll do some more here, more here, more here, more there, there, there. It will have a whole bunch of hay. Oh, I want to get that off my chest. I do believe that good intentions will help save the world. I don't believe that we should be blindly doing so. And there is consequences for every action. And do you know what? It's great. We should be able to house all these... Re we shouldn't even have to have refugees because the world is a happy and fun place. But, you know, it isn't. And we have to help people within our means. And if we don't have the means, we can't help people. And people will be like, tax the rich. Well, they're also ones doing your paycheck. So, <laughs> you know, it's all about money. Anyways, hopefully you guys at least kind of had fun with the episode. <laughs> I had to rant there. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, or if you, if you agree with me, you know, like it. If you disagree with me, I I'd like you not to dislike the video because I am such a low channel that having dislikes could damage me pretty well. But, you know, just, it, it's, you know, it's great to have good intentions. It's better to be able to afford such good intentions. So hopefully you guys have a great day, better than the ones of Syrian refugees, obviously. And peace. Have a good one. It's a shorter episode, but bye!